Level zero. Picture this. You wake up one winter morning, glance out your window, and everything looks like it's been dipped in glass. The trees, the power lines, your car, all coated in a thin, crystalline shell that catches the light like a thousand tiny prisms. It's beautiful, almost magical. You grab your phone to take a picture for Instagram. Then you hear it. A crack, sharp and sudden. A tree branch weighted down by ice snaps clean off and crashes onto your neighbor's fence. That's when you realize, this isn't beautiful. This is dangerous. What you're witnessing is an ice storm, and you're standing at the very beginning of a scale that goes from minor inconvenience to catastrophic infrastructure collapse. Most people think ice storms are just frozen rain, a slightly worse version of sleet. They're wrong. Ice storms are freezing rain events where supercooled water droplets hit surfaces below 32 Fahrenheit and instantly freeze on contact, building up layer after layer of solid glassy ice. The science behind how ice storms form is remarkably specific. You need a temperature inversion where warm air sits above cold air. Precipitation falls through that warm layer and melts into rain, then plunges into the freezing air near the surface. The droplets don't have time to freeze in midair. They remain liquid, supercooled, waiting for something to trigger crystallization. The moment a supercooled droplet touches a surface at or below freezing, it crystallizes instantly, bonding to everything it contacts. This isn't like snow that you can brush off. This is molecular level adhesion. The ice doesn't sit on surfaces, it becomes part of them. At this lowest level, you're looking at less than a quarter inch of ice accumulation, enough to make your driveway a skating rink, enough to make driving feel like piloting a hockey puck. But your power's still on. Your trees are mostly intact. You can still make coffee. This is the tutorial level, the warning shot, the universe gently taps you on the shoulder to say, you have no idea what I'm capable of. But what happens when that ice doesn't stop at a quarter inch? What happens when it keeps building, layer after layer, until the weight becomes unbearable? Level 1. Now we're getting serious. Half an inch of ice accumulation doesn't sound like much, does it? It's about the thickness of your pinky finger. But here's what people don't understand about ice. It's heavy. Really heavy. A half-inch coating of ice on a single power line can add 500 pounds of extra weight per span between poles. Imagine hanging a grand piano from your roof using dental floss. That's what's happening to infrastructure right now. And unlike snow, which is airy and can be blown off by wind, ice doesn't go anywhere. It clings, it accumulates, it bonds to every surface with the tenacity of superglue made from winter itself. Ice is roughly 90% as dense as water, which means a cubic foot weighs about 57 pounds. When you coat a tree branch in half an inch of ice, you're encasing it in a rigid cylinder that multiplies the weight exponentially. A branch that normally weighs 50 pounds might suddenly be supporting 200 pounds or more. At this level, tree branches start snapping with regularity. Not the small twigs, the substantial limbs, the ones as thick as your thigh. They don't bend under the weight, they just give up, fracturing with sounds like rifle shots echoing through your neighborhood. It's like being in a war zone where the bullets are made of wood and ice. Power outages begin. A falling branch takes down a power line here. Accumulated ice pulls another one down there. The electrical grid starts playing a losing game of Jenga. Some neighborhoods lose power for a few hours, others won't see electricity again for days. Roads become nearly impassable. That thin layer from level zero? Now it's a bonded ice sheet that salt can barely touch. Cars slide through intersections like they're being pushed by invisible hands. Accidents multiply, emergency services get stretched thin. Ambulances take twice as long to reach patients. Every emergency becomes exponentially more dangerous. And this is still considered moderate. We're not even halfway up the scale yet, but ice storms don't always know when to stop. The atmospheric conditions that create them can persist for hours, sometimes days, and when they do, level two, one inch of ice. That's all it takes to transform a functional society into a community fighting for basic services. At this accumulation level, the weight of ice on surfaces becomes catastrophic. We're talking about thousands of pounds of additional weight on structures never designed to bear such loads. A typical tree becomes a ticking time bomb coated in an inch of ice. The weight can exceed 30 times the normal load on branches. Entire trees don't just lose branches anymore, they split in half. Mature oaks, maples, pines that have stood for decades suddenly tear themselves apart from the inside out. The sound is horrific, a deep groaning followed by explosive cracking. These falling trees take down power lines, crush cars, and collapse onto homes. Widespread outages are now inevitable. Utility poles suddenly have to support massive ice accumulations they were never engineered for. The poles themselves start snapping like breadsticks. When a utility pole goes down, it can take out entire distribution lines affecting thousands of customers. The cascading effect is what makes this so dangerous. 
One pole fails, increasing the load on adjacent poles, which then fail in sequence like dominoes. A single failure point can trigger a chain reaction that blacks out entire neighborhoods in minutes. Utility companies call this cascading infrastructure collapse. And once it starts, stopping it is nearly impossible. Transformers begin exploding. The combination of ice weight, falling branches, and power surges causes them to fail spectacularly, creating brilliant blue-green flashes in the night sky. The sound is distinctive, a sharp electrical crack followed by a deep boom. It's the sound of modern infrastructure admitting defeat. Road travel becomes suicidal. The ice is now thick enough that nothing melts, even during daytime. Multiple vehicle pileups occur. Ambulances can't reach people who need them. Even four-wheel drive vehicles lose traction. Friction essentially disappears. Emergency rooms see a spike in fractures, head trauma, hypothermia cases from people who lost power and heat. The healthcare system starts showing stress fractures of its own. People become informationally isolated, unable to know when conditions will improve, when power might return. In the age of constant connectivity, this isolation feels almost primitive. This is where ice storms transition from natural events to regional emergencies. The National Weather Service issues warnings. States declare emergencies. People are told to shelter in place. It's not just cleanup anymore, it's an emergency response on a massive scale. But we're still not at the worst case scenario. There's a level beyond this where ice storms stop being disasters and start being catastrophes. Where entire regions go dark. Where the ice doesn't just damage infrastructure, it destroys it completely. Level 3. Welcome to the threshold where ice storms enter the history books. Two inches of ice accumulation is rare. So rare that most people will never experience it in their lifetime. But when it happens, it's the kind of event that defines a generation. This is the level of the 1998 ice storm that devastated parts of Canada, New York, and New England, leaving millions without power, some for weeks. Let me put the weight into perspective. Two inches of ice on a tree branch doesn't just double the one-inch load, it exponentially increases it. We're talking about tens of thousands of pounds distributed across a tree's structure. At this point, it's not a question of if trees will fail, but when and how many. Forests become graveyards. Entire stands of trees, acres upon acres, simply collapse. Not individual trees, whole sections of woodland, creating scenes that look like giant, invisible hands, have reached down and crushed everything. The damage is so severe that forest ecosystems take decades to recover. Young trees get crushed by falling mature ones. Wildlife loses habitat overnight. The power grid doesn't just fail at this level, it disintegrates. Transmission towers, those massive steel structures that carry high voltage lines across regions, begin buckling under the ice load. These aren't suburban utility poles, these are industrial strength structures designed to withstand extreme conditions. When they fail, they take down major transmission lines, causing cascading blackouts that ripple across states. Entire cities go dark. Not neighborhoods, not districts. Entire metropolitan areas lose power simultaneously. Hospitals switch to emergency generators. Water treatment plants struggle to maintain operations. Cell towers without backup power go offline. Communication infrastructure collapses. People become isolated in their own homes, cut off from information, unable to know when power will return. The economic impact becomes staggering. The 1998 ice storm caused an estimated $5.4 billion in damage. Adjusted for inflation, over $9 billion today. Insurance claims overwhelm companies. Businesses close for weeks. The agricultural sector suffers devastating losses as orchards and maple sugar operations, some generations old, are destroyed overnight. This is where ice storms stop being weather events and start being natural disasters on par with major hurricanes or earthquakes. The Federal Emergency Management Agency gets involved. The military assists with emergency response. It's not just cleanup, it's regional reconstruction. Yet even this level, as destructive as it is, isn't the absolute worst nature can deliver. There's one more level, a theoretical extreme that pushes into truly catastrophic territory. Level 4, this is the monster. The nightmare scenario? Ice accumulation exceeds 2 inches, extending toward 3 or even 4 inches in the most extreme recorded cases. At this level, we're no longer talking about a weather event. We're talking about a regional catastrophe that brings modern civilization to its knees. Three to four inches of ice creates weight loads that exceed the design specifications of virtually all above-ground infrastructure. Power lines, telecommunications cables, even the steel support structures of electrical transmission systems. Everything fails, not gradually, simultaneously and catastrophically. The 1951 ice storm in the Midwest saw accumulations reaching three inches in some areas. The damage was so severe that some communities were without power for over a month. But that was in 1951, 
when society was less dependent on electricity. Imagine that happening today. No power means no heat in winter, no refrigeration, no ability to charge phones, no internet, no way to pump gas. Gas pumps need electricity. Society essentially reverts to pre-industrial conditions overnight. Trees at this accumulation level don't just break, they explode. The internal stress from ice weight becomes so extreme that trunks shatter violently, sending shrapnel-like wood fragments flying. Being outside during the peak of such a storm is genuinely life-threatening. People have been killed by falling ice and debris. Homes are crushed, cars are totaled under collapsed structures, transportation networks completely shut down. Roads are impassable not just because they're icy but because they're blocked by thousands of downed trees and power lines. Highway systems become frozen obstacle courses, airports close, train services stop, entire regions become isolated from the outside world. The cascading failures spread beyond just power. Water treatment plants, unable to operate without electricity, and with their backup generators running out of fuel because fuel trucks can't reach them, start failing. Boil water advisories go into effect, but people can't boil water without power. Sewage systems back up. The basic sanitation infrastructure of modern society breaks down. Healthcare systems face critical strain. Hospitals on generator power start triaging patients. People with medical conditions requiring electricity, home oxygen machines, dialysis equipment, face life-threatening situations. Emergency services can't reach everyone who needs help. The death toll from an ice storm at this level isn't just from the immediate impacts, it's from the sustained infrastructure collapse that follows. The psychological impact is profound. When power goes out for weeks, when stores run out of supplies, when you realize help isn't coming quickly, people experience genuine crisis stress. Communities either pull together in remarkable displays of human resilience, or they fracture under the pressure. Recovery from a level four ice storm takes months, sometimes years. The electrical grid has to be substantially rebuilt, not just repaired. Damaged trees pose ongoing hazards for years. The economic impacts ripple through regions for a decade. But here's what should terrify you. These extreme events are becoming more frequent. And the science behind why is something everyone needs to understand. Level 5. This isn't a traditional level on the ice accumulation scale, but it's the level that matters most for the future. Climate change is creating more favorable conditions for severe ice storms in certain regions. And the science behind this is both fascinating and deeply concerning. Here's the mechanism. Ice storms require below freezing air at ground level, but above freezing air aloft. As global temperatures rise, the frequency of this specific atmospheric configuration is increasing in certain latitude bands. Warmer air holds more moisture, meaning when these setups occur, they produce more intense precipitation. Additionally, Arctic warming is causing the jet stream to become more wavy and unstable, creating conditions where warm air intrusions into typically cold regions become more common. Scientists have observed a northward shift in the zone where severe ice storms occur most frequently. Areas that historically saw rare ice accumulation are now seeing it more regularly. The frequency of extreme ice storms in parts of the United States has increased by approximately 50% over the past several decades, according to research from the American Meteorological Society. This means cities and infrastructure that weren't built with severe ice storms in mind are now facing them. Power grids designed for moderate ice loads are encountering extreme ones. Tree species not adapted to ice weight are being devastated. The economic projections are sobering. Insurance industry models suggest that annual damages in North America could reach $15, $20 billion by mid-century, with individual catastrophic events potentially exceeding $30 billion in total economic impact. But it's not just about money. It's about resilience. We're learning to build stronger power grids, to bury more lines underground, to manage tree canopies near power infrastructure more aggressively. Community preparedness matters. After major ice storms, communities that recover fastest are those with strong emergency response plans, where neighbors help neighbors, where local governments have stockpiled supplies and equipment. The future of ice storms isn't just about the weather, it's about how we adapt to changing conditions. It's about building infrastructure that can withstand extremes we once thought were outliers. It's about acknowledging that the climate we built our civilization for no longer exists. But there's one more aspect that scientists are only beginning to understand, something that could make future ice storms even more unpredictable and dangerous than anything we've seen. Level six, what happens when an ice storm doesn't hit alone? What happens when it combines with other extreme weather events to create a compound disaster that multiplies the destruction? This is the frontier of ice storm science, and it's terrifying. Imagine an ice storm followed immediately by a blizzard. The ice accumulation damages trees and power lines, then heavy snow piles on top, adding hundreds of additional pounds per branch. 
or an ice storm that strikes during a polar vortex event, where temperatures plunge to negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit or lower. Now you have ice-damaged infrastructure facing extreme cold that makes repairs nearly impossible and increases heating demands precisely when the power grid is destroyed. Scientists call these compound hazards, and climate models suggest they're becoming more likely. The same atmospheric instability that increases ice storm frequency also increases the probability of rapid temperature swings and back-to-back -back extreme events. In 2021, Texas experienced something close to this, an ice storm followed by a historic cold snap that caused the entire state's power grid to fail. And millions lost power in sub-freezing temperatures. The death toll exceeded 200 people. The economic damage topped $195 billion, making it the costliest winter storm in U.S. history. But here's the truly scary part. That wasn't even a worst-case scenario. Texas had only moderate ice accumulation, around half an inch in most areas. Imagine if that same cold snap had been preceded by a level 3 or level 4 ice storm. The infrastructure damage would have been exponentially worse. The death toll was catastrophic. We're also seeing ice storms interact with infrastructure in new ways. Modern society's dependence on interconnected systems means cascading failures spread faster and farther. An ice storm in one region takes down power lines. Those lines feed substations in neighboring regions. The grid destabilizes. Brownouts and blackouts ripple outward, affecting areas that didn't even experience ice. Then there's the urban heat island effect in reverse. Cities with their concentrated infrastructure, dense tree canopies near power lines, and miles of vulnerable cables are uniquely susceptible to ice storm damage. A suburban neighborhood might lose power for a few days. A major city could face weeks of cascading infrastructure failures affecting millions. And we haven't even touched on the human element. As ice storms become more frequent and severe, we face disaster fatigue. Communities hit by multiple ice storms in consecutive years struggle to fully recover before the next one hits. Insurance costs skyrocket. People move away. Local economies never fully bounce back. The future of ice storms isn't just about thicker ice or more frequent events. It's about how these storms interact with our increasingly complex, interconnected world. It's about compound disasters, cascading failures, and the realization that our infrastructure was built for a climate that no longer exists. From that deceptive, beautiful coding at level zero to the compound catastrophes that could define our future, ice storms reveal a fundamental truth. Nature doesn't need to be violent to be deadly. It just needs to be heavy. A quarter inch of ice is a photo opportunity. Half an inch is a hazard. An inch is an emergency. Two inches is a disaster. Anything beyond that is a regional catastrophe. And when ice storms start combining with other extreme weather, that's when we enter territory we've never prepared for. Territory where the lessons we've learned from past ice storms might not be enough. Where the weight of ice becomes the least of our worries.